I have someone here that I'd like you all to meet. This is my son, Scar. Well, that is very underwhelming. Jennifer Walters, Esquire, lawyer, millennial. And also nostalgia bait. This was probably the most cleverly written episode in the series for a whole minute and 35 seconds. The opening scene was an excellent callback to the 1978's Incredible Hulk. And I personally fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Now, for a minute and 35 seconds, I had hope that this show will close out quite well. But holy shit, was I wrong. Now, my initial thoughts about this episode were very positive for the cleverness of the opening scene to, well, <laughs> that actually might be it. Um, come to think of it, yeah, I think that's it. Like, there was not much in this episode that did it for me. That was nothing that was of any kind of worthwhile meaning or had any kind of worthwhile meaning. The continuity and the cohesion of the show has always been a point of contention for me. And in the season finale, this was more of the same. Top Phelps as the bad guy, that was not a shocker at all. His involvement was particularly written all over the walls in episode eight. There was a hint of his obsession with She-Hulk and all things around her in that particular dating scene. So for me, that wasn't a really big deal or a really big shocker when he was revealed to be the Hulk King. This show at its core had so much potential, but the writers and the writing itself kind of just fell short. As I've said in past videos on She-Hulk, for a show that has only a 30 minute runtime, you can't afford to have lazy writing or just a bunch of filler episodes within the series. And this one, it was littered with it throughout. From, like I said, the filler episodes to the lack of consistency from episode to episode or even the MCU tie-ins. Overall, the show manages to hinder more than it helps. But one thing in the show or this particular episode for me that was a plus was Wong getting a meal out of prison during the post credit scenes. Yes, a meal did violate his parole, but as a viewer on the outside looking in, we clearly see that a meal was a changed person. He was truly a changed man. And I understand why Jennifer did what she did at the end being his lawyer and that she vouched for him. Um, she put him back in jail for 10 years. He broke his parole and he deserves the consequences. But 10 years to me, I felt like he didn't deserve it. When she said 10 years, I was like, damn, he doesn't deserve 10 years. But with that said, the writers understood what us as viewers were going through. So they had Wong break him out in the end again. And come to think of it, Wong is probably the person that should be in trouble right now. But he did the right thing in the end and in the eyes of the audience. The fourth wall breaking stuff wasn't too bad, but they killed the MCU's continuity with uh, KEVIM bot, which I get the joke, or at least this is what I think they were going for with this joke, which is that the Marvel Studio, AKA the Marvel Machine, has been churning out IP after IP day in and day out where the quality of the properties are starting to suffer because they're pushing so much out so fast and the assembly line approach that they are taking to their releasing of the properties just is hurting more than it's helping quality over quantity is what they should be going for but that is the total opposite of what we're getting we're getting quantity over quality and you can see it and particularly this episode, there's a lot that suffers from it. Uh, but getting back to the KEVIM bot, this was officially the Kevin Feige representation of him actually being a bot. And it kind of fit the show within the context of the joke, or at least that's what I hope they were going for. 
Then we have Bruce showing up at the end with a introduction to Scar, leading into possibly a Planet Hulk slash World War Hulk story, which I feel was tied into the Thor Ragnarok movie. So I don't know how that's gonna go or how it's gonna work going forward. So this could also be a possible introduction to Beta Ray Bill in the MCU. Although this is what I thought we were gonna get when we got that awful ass movie, Thor Love and Thunder but we didn't get that nor did we get an actual good movie um and that right there itself is a whole nother can of worms that i do not feel like digging into uh you can check out my review on thor love and thunder i'll link it up here but overall the show was slightly disappointing and if i had to give it a score or a grade in comparison to any of the other disney plus TV series, I'd say it's a low C tier TV series from the inconsistencies with the writing to the bad CGI, which I might add does get better towards the end, but it was still bad for most of the part, uh, especially when you see the Hulk and then you see Jen, or even like I said in the last scene of this uh finale you see hulk you see scar and just looking at jen later it just it's it's it pales in comparison so i don't know what they're gonna do for that going forward but the cgi issue has to be addressed um like i said the show finished off with the lackluster season finale that didn't really go anywhere for me so if we do get a season two which we probably will the showrunners have a lot to make up for but that's the million dollar question can they and will they be able to handle just all the continuity issues and all the lack of writing structure that they had in season one and fix them in season two but that remains to be seen so who knows and i guess we'll find out soon enough but that's it for the video guys uh these are my thoughts on she hulk as a whole and the uh results of just inconsistencies poor writers uh writers who i feel like didn't understand the source material but we'll see what season two has to offer my name's lincoln this is an rpg show like comment sub and i'm out peace